Welcome! To get started with Open Nebula for Enterprise Hybrid Cloud with MiniOne Screencast. Today we are going to learn what MiniOne is and how to use it to deploy the Open Nebula software, how to provision a bare metal hypervisor node, import and adjust virtual machine template for seamless application deployment, finally how to deploy a working application and in this case we are going to deploy the open source empire building strategy. MiniOne is an easy-to-use tool to quickly install and configure Open Nebula either as a front-end only or with enabled KVM hypervisor. If you'd like to learn more, please visit minione.openebula.io. Once you have the link to the MiniOne tool, download it to your server with the preferred command. For easier usage, you can add an execution bit, otherwise just type bash minione. You can use dash dash help to show the possible input arguments. For example, you can evaluate the enterprise version instead of community one. You can set a specific version to be installed. You can adjust bridge settings or set custom password instead of the randomly generated one. In my case, I'm going to set a custom password, as well as I'm going to add double dash frontend to install only frontend packages without any KVM virtualization on this host, plus I would type double dash yes just to skip any confirmation and go straight directly to the deployment. It may take a little while to finish the installation and perform the post-deployment configuration. Once it's all set, you will find the IP address and credentials from the one admin user. Keep them in the safe place. You must use port 2616 to access the web UI. Use the credentials from the previous output to log in into the console. If you will take a look at the host list under the infrastructure, you will notice that it is currently empty. That is because we are only running the frontend node and the hypervisor is yet to be added. There are multiple ways how to do it, but we are going to provision the bare metal instance from the AWS. In order to provision the AWS bare metal hypervisor, you must use one provision UI. The easiest way to access it is from the login screen. The credentials are going to be the same. Before we can provision any host, we must create a provider first. It can be done from the provider screen. You must select the provision type and provider type. In our case, that's going to be AWS. Also, since it's AWS, we also must select the region. I'm going to proceed with AWS North Virginia. You can change the name if you'd like to, but I will remain as is. Always supply the correct AWS access key and correct AWS secret key. Make sure you have the permissions to deploy AWS bare metal hosts. Once the provider is created, navigate to the provision screen to start the provisioning process. On the provisioning screen, press plus to initiate the process. Firstly, select the cluster type you'd like to provision. I'm going to pick AWS Edge Cluster for the purpose of this demonstration. Next, select the provider that was created before. Name your new provision the way you wish. I'm going to stick to defaults. On the last screen, you can configure different inputs like number of AWS instances to create, number of public IP addresses to have, instance type, Amazon machine image, and so on. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to proceed with defaults. Provisioning may take a little while, and you can observe the progress in the specific provision log. Once finished, you may return back to Sunstone by simply changing provision to Sunstone in the address bar.
As you can see right now, we have a new KVM host. All resources that were created in the scope of this provision will belong to the same cluster. That includes virtual networks and data stores. In order to deploy an application, I must have an operating system image and a virtual machine template. Let me download one from the apps under the storage. I'm going to use Ubuntu 24.04. To instantiate it, I must import it to the cluster data store. While image is still being downloaded, the virtual machine template is already there. Press update to change the virtual machine template settings. Let's set the hypervisor to KVM. Also, we need to increase our memory to at least 32 gigs and set CPU to 12, as our end application might require some additional resources. The application I'm going to run definitely requires a little bit more disk space than there is by default. Out of the box, the image is quite tiny. I will need to increase the disk space to give my application a little bit more room to store its data. Lastly, my template comes with a generic Ubuntu image. I need to install some additional tools during the deployment process, and the context tab is going to help me out. The start script window is the place for my commands. Firstly, I want my virtual machine to install Docker with some plugins. Secondly, I need to clone the Git repository with the application data. And as the last step, I need to build my application using the supplied compose file and docker compose up minus d command. To avoid any issues with the special characters, I'll encode my script in base64 by simply turning this switch button. That's it, my virtual machine template is ready for deployment. Now it is time to instantiate the virtual machine and get my strategy game server up and running. The deployment configuration like memory and CPU is going to remain the same as defined in template. However, the network is something I want to configure during the instantiation. I'm going to attach a new network card and place it on the virtual network in the provisioned cluster. The virtual machine is going to be deployed pretty much fast. However, it will take some time to execute the star script that I defined in the template. Once all set, I will be able to access the FreeSiv web on the port 8080 and the attached IP address. Now it is time to actually try out the game itself, and not only visiting the front page, but also make sure that the game is running and all the assets are rendering as expected. And that's it. Our server is running, the game being served and is playable. For additional information, please visit our online resources, miniwan.openebula.io for miniwan documentation, openebula.io slash get dash miniwan to request the link to a software, forum.openebula.io for our community forum, and docs.openebula.io for the general documentation, including the quick start guide. Thank you for watching and see you on the next screencast.